Good morning and happy Mother's Day to all you moms out there. Thanks for everything you do and putting things out. This is uh, going to be my first video of many. Uh, eventually, I'm going to start putting this stuff on YouTube. Um, so we'll call this uh, Project Challenger uh, video one. Uh, I wanted to give an update because you all know I've been getting a lot of parts in and do a lot of things. Um, let me go ahead and turn this camera around. Figure out how the hell to do it. So here's the Challenger. Uh, it's down. I brought it down yesterday. I had to do some rearranging out here in the shop. Um, but I wanted to go over a few things. Like I said, this is the first video in the whole series. Um, I basically am not doing any motorcycle mechanic work uh, anytime in the near future. My uh, The motorcycle lift is under there. All that stuff right there is all body parts for the Challenger. And up top here is also, I've been collecting parts. I uh, purchased this car. Let me give you a little backdrop. This is a 73 Rally Challenger, 340, four speed car that a friend of mine owned, I knew back in high school. Um, the car has not seen the road in 30 years. It has not been on the road since 1991. And uh, may even be sooner than that because that's just what the tags were. Uh, the tags, or 1991, so probably more than likely it's 1990 at the last time this thing's seen road. So I purchased the car. Uh, it took a little while. Buddy did not want to come off the car. So I purchased it back in 2012, I believe, or 2013. So it's been here for a while, and I started the initial. It was a complete car, uh, and I'll, I'll link some video on here of pulling the car out. It was at his brother's house. Um, and like I said, I rode around this car when I was like 15, 16 years old. So I know the car um, it has a little sentimental value. It's, uh, it was a lot of fun back in the day. It was a nice car. Uh, the original 340 is long gone. Uh, it was a 318 that was put into it when I bought it. Uh, it is an original four-speed car. Um, in the meantime, I found a year matching 340. Um, that is a 73340. Uh, I found that on, uh, on I think it was on eBay or somewhere. I found it on the marketplace or something. It was years ago. I, I've had that motor sitting there for a long time. So anyways, I wanted to go over some of what's been going on here lately because I had to rearrange the garage to get, um, you know, because we have all these motorcycles and we have a lot of other things going on here. We've uh, re just recently par purchased a RV and so we have all of our RV stuff right here and, and until we pick up the RV and can move everything into the RV. This is where it sits for now. Um, so... I've been also working on my wife's uh, basement uh, project, and that is almost to the point where I can take that piece, which goes in the basement, and put it together. It's a big uh, crafting cabinet, and uh, but I have to do a little bit of wiring and some drywall before that can happen. So I brought the car down yesterday, and I started to do some work. I took the windshield out yesterday. Um, I'm still on the disassembling part. I took off all these chrome pieces here that go on the inside. Um, that was a little bugger. I had to cut some of the, the screws off. Uh, there's a lot of rot on this side, but not on that side. And, and the thing that's funny about this car is if you know anything about e-bodies, they tend to rot in the same spots. And with this one, it's like hit or miss. It's like some places are really, really bad. Some places are not so bad. And of course, you know, kind of like, like I've never seen one do this before. And I have, you know, I have the new sheet metal. And that's what I've been doing over the last few, you know, 10 years. Was I've been buying sheet metal, buying a piece at a time. Because if anybody knows, this stuff is expensive. And it, it adds up and adds up and adds up. Um, so... The plan so far for this car is we're going to put it back to original color, which is the red. I think it's E5 red. I'm going to put it back to the original red color, which, which I like. 
and um, we're going to do something either with this 340 or we're going to get a 360 maybe and put it in or something else. So uh, that's what we're looking at right now. The major parts of this car and the issue that I've had with this car is I've kind of been trying to figure out exactly where I want to start with the sheet metal. Now, I am not a professional, although I've been professionally trained as an auto body tech years ago when I was in high school. I went to a Votech program, Upper Bucksville Tech School for auto body. And I've used it throughout the years. I've fallen back and, you know, if I lost a job or something like that, I always fell back on doing body work. So, I mean, I have some experience in this stuff, but all the cars that I've done and some of you guys watching this, I've painted your cars before in the past in high school, did a lot of stuff uh, in high school for a lot of friends' cars, kind of pro bono, kind of gave me a little bit of a chance to, to practice or whatever. And I'll put a link on there, a couple of cars, a couple of pictures, a couple few cars that I've painted over the years. But uh, this one here, I'm trying to figure out exactly where I want to start. So, there's two parts, two major parts that are on back order, been on back order since December. It's currently May. Uh, a lot of that has to do with the COVID and the backup because I don't care who you are, whether you buy AMD or Goodmark or whatever kind of metal you code, it's all stamped in Taiwan. So right now, if you know anything about what's going on, all of the cargo ships are stuck in the Pacific doing circles, trying to get in because they just don't have enough people to unload the ships. So there's two pieces that I'm waiting for, and and, and uh, those are these front frame rails. And the, what I did was I bought the ones from OER that are the the whole thing. It's the it's the whole apron and frame rail combined. Okay, so I've got this side is the worst. The the passenger side is the worst, but I'm going to go ahead and replace them both. And if anybody knows anything about replacing the frame rails, then they understand that it's real important that the car stays absolutely level. You take all your measurements, you measure everything, check it twice before you do it, and do one at a time. So the goal is going to be replacing one side and then the other. Issue is that the bottom of this firewall or cowl, lower cowl, is fine on the inside. It looks good there on the inside of the uh, engine compartment, but over here is typical e-body rot. And so I am depending, I, I have the pieces, but I'm debating whether I want to cut in a piece or replace the whole thing. Um, and these are things that I'll come as time goes on. Um, I've got the dashboard unbolted. There's a few things I want to take out the steering column and then get that out. But you can see the floor is on the driver's side is completely shot. Uh, there's a little bit of tiny holes on that side. So we got a whole new floor. We got whole new floors from here all the way back. Even though these are okay, those are okay. And they look fine here underneath. They're pretty scaly. So I went ahead and just, you know, purchased a piece at a time and worked all the way back. Trunk, typical e-body. Uh, you get a lot of rot up in here, right across here. And wherever the, the gas tank bolts up, that's where you get a lot of the water just lays in there. So got a new trunk pan, got a one piece, which you can't put on unless you take the quarters off. So we got new quarter panels. And originally, the car, from what I understand, from what I was told, the car was parked partially because of some carburetor issues and partially because he wanted to put new quarter panels on. And so it is going to finally get those new quarter panels. As a matter of fact, there's not going to be much stock metal left on this, and I know I'll get some shit about that, but let's be realistic. My goal is when I do this car is that it lasts another 50 years. That's the goal. So that somebody else can enjoy it after I'm dead and gone. So I want this car to be around. Uh, that's the goal. Uh, the back frame rails are fine from about here 
Ford. So we're not going to replace it. I found uh, Miller Industries has a section. It's like a 26 inch section on each side. So we're going to go ahead and replace those. So the next goal here is, is still part of the disassemble. Finish taking out the headliner, seat belts on the passenger side, because I got the stuff out on the driver's side. Dashboard, steering column. <clears throat> Just get this stuff all cleaned out back in here so I can start thinking about what's going, <clears throat> going on. Um, it's got some rot on this side, but like I said, the other side doesn't look as bad as this side. So it's kind of hit or miss on here. This is a Pennsylvania car. So, you know, people say, oh, i got a Southern car. Yeah, well, it's a Southern Pennsylvania car. How's that? And so it's all a lot of snow, a lot of rust, uh, rust belt state, a lot of salt, that kind of shit. And as long as I own it, it won't ever see that stuff. So we're going to go ahead and start replacing it. Now, like I said, the point is like, where do you start? Well, it's a unibody car, so you want to make sure that, one, you get it lifted. So people say, well, why don't you put it on a rotisserie? It can't. The, for one, the rear frame rails aren't strong enough to put it on a rotisserie, and the front rails need to be replaced. So before I even think about putting on a rotisserie, I need to replace those frame rails and make that sturdy. Then I'm going to want to go ahead and do the floors, because you don't want to raise it up in the air until you get the floors done. So by the time you're done, I think uh, any chance that I get this thing on a rotisserie won't be until I've got probably 50% of the sheet work metal done. Once that's done, then I could think about putting it on a rotisserie and then I got to depend, well, do I really want to spend the money on a, uh, you know, $1,500 for a rotisserie just to sand the bottom or do I want to try to just get the car high enough in the air that I could get underneath it? Well, I'm not a spring chicken. I'm 54 years old. Got some health issues. And crawling around the floor is a problem. So, you know, I, I worked on my truck the other day. And it must have took me, you know, a job that normally took three hours took me six. Climbing in and out from underneath the damn truck. So it is an issue, but um, we're going to go. We're going to push forward and see what we can do. But you can see, you know, some, <clears throat> some of this is not as bad as the other side. Like this doesn't look anything like the inner door panel on the other side. And the floors don't look as bad. Um, the bottom of the doors, the other one's got a huge crease down the side, uh, the stock door. So uh, I found a gentleman up in Pennsylvania. Uh, this has got some rod in the bottom, but I found a gentleman up in Pennsylvania who had two very nice doors on the marketplace. So I picked these up and uh, they feel, they don't feel like they got any bondo in anything in them. You can see surface rust underneath. He threw some paint on top of it to try to keep it from getting any worse. But these were uh, garage kept doors. And um, we'll see once we uh, start DA sanding it down, but we're nowhere near that point. The other issue you gotta think about when you work on these old cars like this, especially on the unibody things, is when you start doing panels, Although you, you might be doing a quarter panel, you got to have your door on, you got to have your trunk lid on, you got to have valance on the back so you can make sure everything lines up, all your body lines, everything lines up perfectly before you start welding. So there's a lot of putting panels on, taking panels off, putting panels on, taking panels off. And it, it's time consuming, but you know, people are like, well, oh, dude, you got all these parts. Why don't you get busy? Throw some, you know. And it doesn't work that way. It takes time. You have to have patience with this stuff. Um, but if you're steady on it, like my recommendation is, people get overwhelmed and they, they leave the car go. A panel at a time. Do a section at a time and complete it to primer, then move on to the next section. That is my recommendation as long as I've been doing this stuff. So here's where we are, Project Challenger. This is uh, Mother's Day 2021. So stay tuned for more action later. Thank you. <laughs>